everybody. This is Hello. Uh, I'm Amanda, and that's Jim. Yeah. And <laughs> or actually, that's Jim, depending or on which Eminem. way you're Eminem. We're we're gonna release a oh, rap. Oh, I want album. Eminems now. You want Eminems? But uh, <laughs> you know what else I want though? Uh, you viewers, I want you to go check out our Amazon special. Yeah, it's finally an Eminem special. Streaming on Amazon Prime. So if you would like to see videos that are not contained in two little boxes, uh, then you just go over to Amazon Prime. They and, were made and, BC before Corona. <laughs> BC, yeah, yeah. And uh, there, there's actually social contact in there. We are not social distancing in those videos. So much social contact. Way too much and social contact. And some unsocial contact. contact. <laughs> there's a little bit of anti-social contact in there. But go, go and enjoy it. And uh, we'll keep bringing you new videos all the time over here too. All right, bye everybody. Stay bye. safe. <laughs> Anti-social contact. When I got out of jail, I decided I would try drugs. <laughs> Dick pics. <laughs> like a fat guy needs that kind of stress. <laughs> Have you ever played Santa Claus? No. Pays $150 to $200 an hour. Ho, ho, ho. I am in. Join in the gym. I pick out the one with the best snack and smoothie bar. <laughs> so what's my logical answer? I go get a vasectomy. <laughs> my first thought was, damn, I'm paying you a lot of money and I gotta shave myself. <laughs> hey, I wanna thank you guys so much. Thank you very much. I'm John G. Thank you. What are you gonna do? You're not gonna start out. I don't know what I'm gonna do. You need to make some plans, explore your different options. But besides, with you guys being broken up, it's a really good opportunity for you to get way late. You always wanted to move to LA, now's your chance. I still love my wife. Okay, can you stop being a whiny little bitch? Is this some sort of experimental therapy? Does this mean you're not going to drive me back and forth to shoots? Probably. I'm going to need a raise. So, this has been a wonderful sociological experiment. Did you guys have any worries about signing up to do this? No. No. Yeah, we're, we're an open book. We are, and we're always on the same page. Always. We're an open book on the same page.
You're still not ready? We have to leave in like five minutes. I'm ready. Uh, you're not dressed. I am. Uh, no, you can't go like this. Do you want some tea? No, I'm good. Actually, I think I'm just gonna turn on some wrestling. Like hell you are. Oh yeah, well that's the last time we watched Sherlock in this house. What made you change your mind? Half naked girls. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, this is so exciting. <sighs> he got me a vibrator. Mom was right, that really was a good gift. There is no one at the beach right now. <laughs> Do you want a skinny dip? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Now. What are you doing? Speaking of her hair, by the way, every morning I just a clump of just red chia pet is just in the shower. Every morning. I don't know how she still has hair. Are you trying to tell me that someone sent you unsolicited photo of boobs? I mean, I don't know. It's not impossible. You tell me people send you dick pics all the time. Yeah, but it's different. How? It's just different. He just flips the channels. Like, I'm like, we just, like, I don't even understand what's happening. She just likes to think she's right without considering any other information. Juice or milk. Um, he never finishes it off and throws it out. He just leaves a little bit at the bottom. You would look so hot in this. I'll return it. I'll return the lingerie and the shoes. Okay? Wait, what? What shoes? No, stop. What shoes? You didn't say anything about the shoes. What? They are saying, where do you want to do your special? There's only one place. I want to go home. Comic strip. That's home. Holy shit, it's good to come up when you're already drunk. That's amazing. <laughs> Guys are looking up like, does that shit work? <laughs> I think it's time you get back in the shape. <laughs> Doc, I've been coming to you for 18 years. Where the fuck did you dig up the word back? <laughs> there are some days I've done nothing but ejaculate and sleep, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I don't know why I looked directly at you for that joke. But, uh, I was a well, I my eyes that is the first whiskey dick reference of the evening. <laughs> it is now official. I like this side of the room more than these people. <laughs> Screw these people. How are you? Well, what was long? On occasion, I walk up next to people that look like Dennis Rodman, but. <laughs> You either have a good drunk story or you are someone's drunk story. <laughs> I'm too damn old. I love the fact that some of these are time release jokes. <laughs> They're sneaky jokes that will get to you in a minute or two. How come no matter how much sleep you get when waking in the morning we're still tired? Kind of like, uh, good morning. I'm ready for bed. <laughs> Hey, the light bill's late. It's always dark where I am. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down 
let's go down, come on down. Come on, sinners, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, standing in the left a good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Lord, show me the way. Well, 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 oh, in my time that I go down, don't want nobody to mourn down. All I want for you to do is take my body home. Well, 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 down to the river. I can die easy down to the river. Well, 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 I can die easy dying. Don't want nobody to mourn. Take my body home, well, 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 so I can die easy. Down to the river, down to the river, down to the river, down to the river. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved us. was blind, but now I see. Was blind, but now I see. Down to the river, I can die easy. Down to the river, I can die dying. I can die easy. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. You are in for a fantastic treat tonight. Welcome to the Sunday Funny. Comics from all around the world coming hey. right to you. Woo. Woo. We, got, we got musicians, we got comedians. We have somebody named Agent Z, which is a little bit scary to me. I'd like to start by bringing on your host for today. Uh, she is a very funny young lady. She works all over the world. You can see her on Living in Exile on Amazon Prime. Put your hands yeah. together. Help me welcome Miss Lori Summer. Lori Summer. Yay, me. Oh, the applause. I can feel it from wherever you are. Hi, everybody. <laughs> are you well, over it? Are we over it? Are we finding an escape through comedy once again? We are your slaves, ladies and gentlemen. We are all of your slaves. Thank you so much for tuning in. You could have uh, been watching. 90 Day Fiance or something like that, but instead you're stuck with us. Uh, that's actually what I would be doing now. It's Sunday night. It's 90 Day Fiance. Uh, I'm single, so I like to see other people miserable, uh, which makes me happy that I made the decision that I made to stay single during quarantine, which is great. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I, I still feel like this is just the never ending Groundhog Day. Every day, every single day, whenever I wake up, every single time, I'm always like, oh my God, I think I have it. Oh my God, I have the Rona, I have it. And then I drink coffee, I drink some water. I'm like, all right, I'm not dying today. Maybe tomorrow, but today, so far, I'm okay. Uh, I'm out in Long Island. I do live in the city, but I'm out in Long Island taking care of my parents, helping them out. And uh, so I don't have that luxury of being in the city of hearing everybody bang the pots and cheer at 7 p.m. And, uh, and people aren't doing it here, and which kind of bums me out, you know, because I, I do, I go outside. Uh, I'm not cheering because there's no one else cheering with me. I just run out at seven o'clock and scream, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> and then I uh, go back inside and uh, the neighbors aren't speaking to me. So uh, I think I've made them all nervous. But that's how I feel every day. Um, I'm like, what is, I, I don't think any of us can like really grasp what's happening because I just, I don't understand it. I don't, I don't understand how much I'm eating. Like I've never in my life, I'm, I'm a grown woman, but I'm eating like I think that I'm in my early 20s and I'm just going to burn it off and like tomorrow it's going to be gone. And I think I need to go back to my 20s of how I used to do things, you know, a little, uh, I'm thinking about becoming bulimic again. Uh, that's really, 
because I want to enjoy the food, but I also don't want to deal with the body issues afterwards. Um, so I, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm, I'm, I'm not there yet. You, you know, just I'm thinking about it, uh, especially if they do decide to um, open up the beaches and the pools, because right now I'm actually kind of happy that the beaches, I hope they do stay closed. I don't want the pressure. I don't want the pressure of, of doing a crunch right now. I don't want to do cardio. I'm tired. Uh, I bought a jump rope. I finally opened it. Um, I jumped uh, three times and realized that I'm not good at it. So I'm no longer jump roping. Uh, after I did the jump rope though, I said, oh, let me do some yard work. That'll help me out. I'll get some exercise, doing some yard work, stay outside. It's a gorgeous day out. Yeah, now I have poison ivy. I don't know if you could see it, but this was me doing, uh, these are all the things that have gone wrong with me for this uh, pandemic. I have poison ivy, I got hurt sitting, and, uh, and I also fell downstairs. So I've been very busy for this whole, uh, that's the most uh, productive <laughs> I've been, uh, falling down the stairs. That was, that was a good one. But, the, but this, I think I'm the only person that has gone to the doctor three times since the pandemic started. <laughs> like I've had to go to the doctor three different times. And how the doctor's, I don't know if you've gone to the doctor's office, a lot of people don't want to go. My doctor's office, you should come. It's really nice because they have the one side if you have the Rona, that's the one like you can't, like you're not, if you have a fever, you're coughing, you have to go over there. And then you go into the regular side if you're not. And uh, so I walked in there and I have these blotches all over my neck and it's all over my face. And as soon as I walk up to the counter, they're like, you have to go on the other side because they thought apparently that's a, is that a symptom now? Like the rash for Corona, some people are getting rashes. Well, they thought that I had it and they were trying to kick me out. And I was like, no, it's just, it's poison ivy. So now I'm on steroids and I'm going to say, uh, I'm just telling you guys, but you know, for everybody else, the reason why I'm, fat now is because I'm on steroids. That's, I'm not gonna blame cheese and bread. It's not, it has nothing to do with cheese or bread. Um, let's see, this past week, what else did I do besides get poison ivy? It was um, 420, which was pot day. Um, I was very excited because I haven't real, I had pot for a, a while. I haven't smoked it in a while. So I, you know, I, I let my parents know. I was like, Monday, I'm smoking pot and, uh, and you know that you're older and you know that you're living in the twilight zone when your mom says, okay, we'll just do it outside. Don't do it in the house. Go outside and smoke your pot. <laughs> ah, I wish I can get some high. I can't get some high. But it's just completely different. I used to have to hide it. I, at least I thought that I was hiding it. I actually, um, I used to smoke pot in the house when I was a teenager and uh, me not knowing that it had, a, like, I didn't know. Like, I, I used to do it in the bathroom while I was in the shower. I cut a screen. I cut a hole in the screen. That's how much of an idiot I was. Not only was I smoking pot in the house, but I thought that I had to cut a hole in a screen so the smoke would go out. Does anyone realize how retarded I am? Is that, okay, that, nothing? Thank you, Allie, I appreciate the thumbs up. Uh, I did have I did, one person I did laughing. I crazy, crazy stuff too. I, I, I got you, I got your back. <laughs> Thank you, ever so much. But I was always, you know, like when I was younger, my parents knew that I smoked pot when I was younger and uh, that was because they read my diary and uh, <laughs> which wasn't, uh, you know, like I, I think about it now and, you know, they, they read my diary. Yeah. And that just lets me know that they cared about me and they also don't respect boundaries. So, um, <laughs> which is why I don't feel bad that I took money out of their wallet to buy cigarettes. Um, I still take money out of their wallet though. Sometimes my father will catch me. I'll come into his room when he's sleeping and I'll just pick up his pants and go into the pocket and he'll wake up. I'm like, Hi, Jack, go back to sleep. And then I just run away and go buy presents for myself. All right, what else do I want to talk about? I don't know, there's so much to say. I don't know what I want to talk about. All right, um, let's see. What do I want to say? You know, I think, I think I just want to start the show. Do you guys want to start the show? Let's do it. I think that's good. Yeah, that's been 10 minutes. I gave you 10 minutes of my life and you're stuck with me. So if you're out there watching us, thank you so much for joining us. We have incredible mm -hmm. talent ahead. 
Uh, we do have your microphones on, as Jim let you know, if you're coming in a little bit late, just to let you know, your microphones are on. We want to hear your laughter. Uh, we're asking that you please be kind, no heckling. I mean, it's bad enough when it's in a show, but if we can't even see you and we just hear you, it's going to be weird when I'm telling you to shut the fuck up. So uh, I'm just going to say it right off the bat. Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sit on your couch. You know, take us into the bathroom with you when you pee. I, you know, Woo! I might, I might do it. I, you know, I've been known, I've been known to do such crazy things. So we are going to get everything started. Are you guys ready for it? Because I am ready. Woo! Woo! Our first comedian. I got to read everything off. Uh, our first comedian coming up. Uh, he has. Uh, you could hear him on iHeartRadio, Javin's Den, and he performs for our troops overseas. Please put your hands together and welcome Davin Rosenblatt to the stage. Davin Rosenblatt. Yay. This is fun. Keep it going for Lori. Give Lori Woo! a nice applause. Yay! Mm -hmm. Yes, this is exciting. <laughs> welcome to uh, my basement. This is a. Uh, this is how I thought the career was going to end. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Dealing with the coronavirus together. I'll tell you what, this coronavirus has been tough. It's uh, financially ruined a lot of companies, people. It's ruined me. I mean, because these companies can't open up. I had hundreds of thousands of dollars in Kohl's cash. Now I have nowhere to spend it. It's terrible. <laughs> My 401k is doing so badly, it's a 201j. That's what it is. Right now. <laughs> it's a, it's a, there, are, there, are some, uh, there are some good points. There are some good points. For, interest, for instance, this has given my mother something new to worry about, so that's exciting. <laughs> nah, it's, okay. it's okay. This is just like all my other shows, me standing there in front of a green tablecloth <laughs> looking for approval from a bunch of empty squares. This is really what it's come to. But it's tough, man. It's tough. I mean, there are good things, though. Like, we have low gas prices, less pollution, Rudy Giuliani's disappeared. It's nice. <laughs> <They're good things. laughs> And, you know, and, and, you know, people, they, they turn to religion in times of stress, and I get that. But even, it's really no release, though. Like, you know, the Jehovah's Witnesses, I feel bad for them. They know we're home, but they can't knock on our doors. It has to be very stressful. <laughs> and, and, you know, so I'm Jewish. We, we had Passover. We had the Cyber Seder. You know, that was fun up until Elijah ghosted me. <laughs> Some people, you know, they insisted on getting getting together. Well, we we have to go to church. Why? So God can smite you? Why, why do you have to go? It's dangerous. Oh, God will protect me. Will he? He kind of left his son hanging. What chance do you have? <laughs> it, it, it's a, it's just terrible, and people don't know how to react to any of this stuff. So you know, the pre I got to be honest with you. I, I I don't really feel like the president is giving this his best effort. I feel like he's not motivated. I don't know why. I feel like maybe if they renamed COVID-19 Hillary, that would get him focused. <laughs> <laughs> going to lock up the crooked virus. It's going to be great. He's just not focused. Uh, and they, they, give us, they give us advice. They all give us advice. What do they tell us? Don't touch your face. What? Don't touch your face? That's like telling an Italian guy not to grab his nuts. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> That's like, that's like telling a high school boy not to smell his finger after he just finger banged the cheerleader. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you folks, I've been doing this over 20 years. That's my first finger banging joke. That right there. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Well done. <laughs> that's impressive. It took a pandemic, but it finally happened. And like was a little Woo! before, if you don't like the joke, I don't give a shit. Walk out of your house. I win again. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Hope everybody's in the streets. It doesn't matter to me. They don't know. They don't know. So you got the, they got the president up there musing. He's like, well, what happens if you inject disinfectant? And everybody got in an uproar about that. What happens if you inject disinfectant? They should have kept the cameras rolling. Later on, he said, if you have stiff joints, uh, drink some WD-40. <laughs> <laughs> the president doesn't know. But, you know, he's coming up with ideas. He's brainstorming. Like, I heard today he asked uh, Dr. Deborah Burks, he goes, is it true that uh, a, a bullet to the head will kill the coronavirus? And she said, yes, you go first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, feel, I feel bad with hey, Deborah Burks, man. If this whole doctor thing doesn't work out, She's going to be great at improv because she really knows how to handle shitty suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what. The, the, president, well, the president was exposed to the virus. He was exposed to the virus. That's why I think Mike Pence has been the bravest person throughout this whole thing. Because Donald Trump was exposed, but that did not stop Mike Pence from kissing Trump's ass. <laughs> <laughs> 
And you know what? Donald Trump was exposed, but he did not get the coronavirus. I know why. The virus was afraid of Donald Trump. Like, no, I'm not going there. No, that guy raw dogs porn stars. That's gross. I don't want to catch anything. <laughs> and that concludes the that concludes the coronavirus portion of my show. New <laughs> <laughs> material never tried before on Zoom. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Woo! <laughs> These are strange times, ladies and gentlemen. Strange times, man. I don't know what's going on. We got other problems in this country besides the coronavirus. We got a gun problem in this country. We got a gun problem in this country. Actually, you know what? We don't have a gun problem. We have a men with gun problem. Because it's only men that go into like churches, malls, theaters, shoot them up. Women don't do that. They don't do that. And it's because men and women think differently. Men think, how can I kill as many people as possible as quickly as possible by shooting them? Women don't think that way. Women think, how can I kill one man? As slowly as possible. <laughs> this feels good. You guys are just giving me just enough love to let me go one more fucking day. Because <laughs> I got to tell you, I was going to go out and lick some people tomorrow in the supermarket, but I'm going to fucking postpone that shit for Wednesday now. <laughs> Never felt better about myself. We don't... I think the message from this is stay in school, but there's no school to go to, so you're all fucked. How do you like that? You can't go to school anymore. <laughs> Don't know the meaning of words anymore. Don't know. We just throw the words around, like the word brave. We just throw the word brave around. You know who they called brave? They called Amy Schumer brave. You don't know, you guys know who Amy Schumer is. If the audience, if you don't, Amy Schumer is a comedian like me, but successful. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure Amy Schumer is doing a show on Zoom right now in her basement in front of a green tablecloth. I'm sure Amy Schumer is having the exact same experience I am as a comic. Mm -hmm. But Amy Schumer decided to pose naked, and she got a lot of attention. Some of the positive, some of the negative. I was like, oh, she's so brave. She wasn't brave. She was uncomfortable with her body. She looked good, good for Amy. You know what else they call brave? Caitlyn Jenner. They said Caitlyn Jenner was right. Speaking of Caitlyn, Caitlyn just had the surgery, just had her penis removed. This is true. They asked Caitlyn's ex-wife, uh, Chris Jenner, what she thought. And Chris is like, I'm not impressed. I took Bruce's balls years ago. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> but, they, but they called Caitlyn brave. Caitlyn wasn't brave. She was uncomfortable in her body. She had a lot of money, got the surgery, looks good. Good for Caitlyn. You know what brave is? Brave is staying naked on the comfort of a Motel 6. That's brave. <laughs> brave is eating the sushi from the gas station. That's brave. <laughs> <laughs> Brave is telling your wife, oh, you know what, honey, maybe you don't need dessert tonight. That's brave. <laughs> brave is telling an old Italian woman her sauce is watery and bland. That's brave. Oh, <laughs> brave is telling a Jewish person their coupon expired. That's brave. <laughs> brave is after a black woman goes, oh, no, you didn't go, yes, I did. That's brave. <laughs> brave is holding the cup for Michael J. Fox to take his piss test. That's Brave. Oh. <laughs> Apparently Brave is telling that joke all over the basement on Zoom. <laughs> I realize, I apologize. I realized that joke was a little shaky. <laughs> like I would ever apologize for a joke. Comics don't apologize for jokes. We don't apologize for jokes. And we certainly don't do it on Zoom when you can't hurt us. I'll tell you that right now. What's the worst you do? Disconnect my Wi-Fi? I don't give a shit. I, I'm, a, I'm old school. I got Penthouse Magazine. I can fucking survive for weeks. <laughs> you know what's the best part about doing this whole thing? It's seeing Jim Mandrinos' face staring at, back at me with his space kid of headphones on. That's the best part of this whole experience. <laughs> I could just imagine Jim listening to something much more enjoyable than me. <laughs> Weird, man. This is good, though. I'm, I'm glad we did this. Thank you guys for participating and you know, giving comics a little bit more to go on. Because I travel. We don't travel anymore. I've traveled all over the world. Been to Korea. Korea's a beautiful country, so a lot of cool things in Korea, a lot of interesting things in Korea. One thing I did not see in Korea was a nail salon. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. You guys have been fantastic. Thank Woo! you for having me. Enjoy the rest of your talented comics. Bye-bye. Mm. Oh, yes, yes. everybody Woo. clap. Keep it going for Davin Rosenblatt. And don't forget, you can hear him on iHeartRadio, Davin's Den. Definitely check him out. Are you guys ready for more? Shall we keep Woo. it moving? Yeah. 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 All right. Coming up next, she is a comedian. She is an actress. She's a regular all around New York City. Uh, you can see her Jordan on Jordan Rock's Productively Stoned. 
and Comedy Confessions on Amazon Prime. Everyone put your hands together and welcome Allie Fowler. Woo! Yeah. Hi guys, how are you? I'm Allie Fowler. Um, I did not return to religion during times of crisis. Um, I turned to brownies and bagels with schmear because I'm also too <laughs> um, <laughs> So I've been eating my feelings. Um, I've been drinking my feelings as well. Um, and on 420, I smoked all of my feelings. Um, <laughs> uh, I have been rationing a very uh, strong magic brownie uh, <laughs> for the better portion of about, about seven weeks. Um, and then I somehow managed to reenact all of Half Baked on my own. Um, and I, it was the greatest Wednesday of my life in all of quarantine. It, it like took me back to high school. It was awesome. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, Cat Williams always says like, there's only side effects, three side effects of weed, a hungry, happy, sleepy. That's it. Um, and I ate myself out of house and home and went to the grocery store with a mask. Um, oh, I did at the beginning, um, someone, Lori was talking about going to the doctor. I went to the doctor because I just wanted to make sure that I was still as neurotic um, as humanly possible. Um, it comes with genetics. Um, so I went to the doctor because I thought that I had corona. I sneezed and I coughed and then like everyone looked at me like they gave me the death stare. And I was just like, no, I'm just gonna go. Like, I'm just gonna go use my health insurance because this is like the first time I've had health insurance in a really long time and like invest in my copay. So like I went to the doctor and basically she told me, she was like, you're, you're obviously crazy. Um, you have allergies, go home and take a Claritin and just like stay out of these streets and don't catch that shit. Um, so instead of justifying my sneezes and my coughs for my own good, I'm justifying them in public. Um, so like if I sneeze and I'm in the grocery store, I'm just like, don't worry. I, I just, it was a pepper that I ate in my salad. Like it's, it just was a tickle, it was a tickle in my throat. Um, I did have to do that in a meeting. Um, at one point before we were quarantined. Um, so make sure you're justifying all of your bodily functions. Um, <laughs> just be like a good citizen. Just like start justifying everything that you're doing. Like farts, sneezes, you know, picking, whatever it is. Um, just be courteous, I mean, of your neighbors. That's what I'm saying, you know? Um, it's a gross joke. I don't really care if you laugh. I thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> I started working out. That's the one thing I've been doing. I started working out. I found this... Um, this guy named the fitness marshal who is this like fabulous dance instructor um and he ha there's this there's this video called Taki Taki, and he has dancers um and you do it on youtube so i did that on sunday or saturday sorry yesterday um because <laughs> clearly there's no calendar anymore we're in quarantine um so i did that yesterday with four of my girlfriends and one of the moves is like clean the windows right and then he goes now clean the center and then clean it like your mother-in-law is coming to town, right? So that's been my joy, like dance exercising um, to ridiculous, um, to ridiculous things. There's also this other thing called the class. It's basically like white privilege exercise. Um, <laughs> it's like this skinny blonde woman, um, like with alternative rock playing in the background, and she's like working out, like feeling herself. So like, if you need a dose of white privilege, like check out the class. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> every day at 7 p.m. Um, just so you guys know, uh, like every day, have you guys been doing the clap? Have you have you been doing the clap and not getting the clap? <laughs> Nobody's clapping at seven. Every day at seven, there's Sinatra. They play Sinatra <laughs> in New York, New York, from from like across the the way, uh, across my building. Um, and today I have my I I had my best friend Giuseppe and his fabulous fiance, who is an out of work hairstylist. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's a setup for my next joke, so pay attention. Cheers, uh, boys. I'm over because we are all Corona free and I wanted to do Sunday dinner. Um, and then I, I somehow said like, oh, it's 7 p.m. Everybody stop what you're doing. It's Sinatra and the clap. So make sure you don't <laughs> get any STDs, quarantining yourself. Um, stay safe, wear a mask, even when you're fucking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, so because I haven't gotten a haircut in so long, um, the last time I went home, it was, I think it was like Thanksgiving or Christmas. I saw, does anybody remember, like, remember what a Flowbee is? Like that ridiculous, like vacuum cleaner Flowbee? 
nobody cares. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> like a vacuum cleaner that sucks your hair, right? And it cuts it. I found one in my parents' house. And in retrospect, like I was laughing at it. But in retrospect, I should have taken it with me because I clearly need a haircut, right? Um, and then I should just like start charging people. Like I should just go outside on the sidewalk and be like, pay what you can, donate. And then just like, shh, 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 and, like make a little extra cash on the side, <laughs> right? <laughs> and like then I could also create jobs, right? I could create jobs. Like, are you working? Do you want to like put strap on a mask and some gloves and like here, cut your neighbor's hair, pay what you can, you know? Um, I feel like that's like where the economy's going. Um, <laughs> uh, another, what do I? What else do I want to talk about? Um, I think. Oh yeah. So the the presidential addresses. Um, that's like I can't listen to him anymore. Like I have, I can't listen to him ever. Because it just sounds, it feels like there's like a knife in my ear um, every time he opens his mouth. So like I'm hoping that like during a presidential address, like if he were to do it on Zoom, that he just get Zoom, like he'll get Zoom bombed. I don't know mm. how, I don't know where, like I, it doesn't matter, but I would love, I would love, love, love to see that. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Um, oh, I did get Zoom bombed <laughs> during a show. Um, which was great. Um, it was, it was basically like someone coming on, literally coming on t into the Zoom <laughs> show. Um, this is a true story. Like it's, it, it's happened to me on a couple of comedy shows that I've done. So like, I'm glad everybody is like getting their rocks off at home. Um, <laughs> it's, this is the world that we live in. This is where we are right now. I'm doing comedy in my living room. Um, it's weird without an audience, but I, it looks like you guys are enjoying the show, so I'm going to leave it on a high <laughs> My name's Allie Fowler. I love you guys so much. Stay safe. Allie Fowler! Woo! Yay. Don't forget, Allie. you can see her with Jordan Rocks, Productively Stone, and Comedy Confessions on Amazon Prime. Uh, I like that you're doing the dancing. You have to do, you know, everyone's got to do the... Uh, the exercising. I'm actually a former dancer. People don't know that about me. I am a retired hip hop dancer because oh, cool. um, you have to retire at some point uh, when you turn 40. Jay Z is not calling. Uh, but I have a lot of people that I usually danced for, and uh, one of them is uh, Mariah Carey. I cool. did dance for Puffy. Uh, I danced for Whitney Houston. Ooh. who happens to still owe me money and i don't think i'm gonna get it all right uh, oh, God. All right, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put that video that i was referencing to you guys in, in the chat room so enjoy it and back to lori oh thank you so much and we're gonna keep the party rolling you all ready for more yes you are are you ready yeah come on yes. give me some energy everybody yes i can hear you out there all right we have a wonderful performer coming up to do a little musical arrangement for us. Uh, she is a musician, she's an actress, she uh, has performed in Murdered by the Mob, and she has a series on Amazon Prime called Profiles Please. Put your hands together and welcome the lovely Lara Star Rigores. All right, thanks guys. Um, so you guys are gonna know this song, so sing along with me. Uh, it's, it's about all of us, so uh, let's all do it together. Not like that, just sing the song. Okay, cool. Hey, where did we go? It's when the rains came Down in the hollow Or playing a new game Laughing and a running, hey, hey Skipping and a jumping in the misty morning fog with oh my heart to thumbing and you who is it blue eyed girl <laughs> I have blue eyes you my what red eyed girl <laughs> my lovely assistant so whatever happened to Tuesday and so slow Going down the old mound with a transistor radio. Standing in the sunlight laughing, hiding high the rainbow's wall. Slipping and sliding all along the waterfall with you. Who is it, guys? 
brown eyed girl. <laughs> Girl. All right, guys, cool. You're amazing. So here's what we're going to do. A little challenge in this quarantine. Uh, girls versus guys. Girls go first. Just the ladies are going to sing the sha la la. All right? Do you remember when girls now you sing? Sha la 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 You guys are good. All right. Guess we have to give the guys a chance. So, guys, now it's your turn to show the girls. Guys, now you're gonna sing the sha la la. Do you remember when? Sha la la. Guys, now you sing. Sha la 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 we're gonna have the guys sing like girls. All right, so guys, sing like ladies. I have never, ever seen it done like that before. All right, tell you what. Let's sing it like we're really, really drunk, because most of us probably are right now and have been for 50, 60. All right, and sha la la's. Drunk. Sha la 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 He's drunk. He passed out. Everybody raise one hand. There you go. Put it over your eye. Sing it like a pirate. <laughs> I don't even know how pirates sing. <laughs> Holy crap. You guys will do anything. <laughs> Guys are good. All right. Yes. Oh, everyone, clap for Lara and her lovely assistant. Good voice memos. Clown that I love. Patch. Wait, wasn't that who was that doctor? Patch. Uh, is Patch. he wearing a nose? Adams. Patch Adams. Adams. <laughs> so, thank you very much, whoever said Adams. Uh, all right, you guys ready for more? Are we good? Are we doing good? Are you having a good time? Do you want to keep yeah. it moving? Yeah, let's keep it moving. <laughs> To this next performer coming to the uh, the blind beard, and he's got a YouTube channel. You can find him there. You're gonna see him right now, Mr. Walter Matuza. Yay! Hey, everyone. It's the blind beard here, Walter Matuza. Um, I am legally blind. It's a post to most serial delinquents who are obviously illegally sighted. Um, yeah, I'm still the one here sitting here in my pajamas, no shoes, pajama pants on, my camo shirt, my camo hat, you know, <laughs> trying to not be seen in my room, uh, hiding out over here. I've been, uh, I've been enjoying this time most of all because it's been Miller time um, <laughs> here, on, here at my home. Um, I do have a cane right here. And I, it is a new type of cane. It's called the no jab cane. And it has a spring in the handle. So it goes up and down. <laughs> oh, yeah. It looks like I'm jerking <laughs> off half the time when I'm at the subway station. Um, that's kind of that's kind of my new way of, of getting people to avoid sitting next to me. Um, <laughs> I'll sit there and I'll start jerking my cane off. So people will walk away. I've, I've also noticed as a visually impaired person, um, a lot of people do tend, I mean, you guys have noticed that as well, being on subways in New York City, not lately, but being on the subways, you will notice that a lot of people's asses get right in your face. And it does feel like you kind of need to have a little bit of an ass fetish in, in New York City. Um, so yeah, since, since I am legally blind and I, I graduated college, um, I've been thinking about starting my own business and 
Um, the business is going to be called The Blind Leading the Blind. Um, <laughs> it's it's going to be a tour company. And, I'm, and I am going to give tours. Um, so let's, let's start off down by the uh, South Ferry, over, over by the Staten Island Ferry down there at the base of Manhattan. And we'll start walking north from there. Over here is Times Square. I think. <laughs> let's go a little further. Up, up here is the Empire State Building. I think. <laughs> Let's go a little further. Here's the East River. You can smell that from anywhere. Um, great thing about being in, uh, great thing I've noticed about walking around in the city, uh, being visually impaired is that, you know, you can have a great deal of caring less about people because you can just trip people with that, with my cane constantly, which is the most fun. And I remember one time I was, I was walking around in the, the Staten Island Mall and I almost tripped someone and I bumped into him and he goes, he goes, what the hell's the matter with you? Why would you walk into me? What are you blind or something? And I just got to go, yeah, a matter of fact, I am. Thanks for pointing out the obvious. Um, I just, I just love that story because it's kind of ridiculous. But um, how many, how many of you guys like to go to um, like bars and stuff? You guys like to go to bars? You're missing it. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Me too. Um, I, uh, I, I like to go to bars and like when I was single, I would go to bars and and I would introduce myself. I would go go to like to women and I would go and shake my hand, shit, go to shake. Damn it. I'm messing this joke up. <laughs> um, I, w I would go up to a woman and shake her hand, but a lot of times I would miss and shake her tit <laughs> <laughs> on accident. Of course, in air quotes, my blind audience out there. Um, but I also been, but, um, yeah, I was saying when I was single, I did that, but I do have a girlfriend now, and she is also, le she is also legally blind, um, and uh, I'll tell you about how we met. Um, we were in, we were walking, I was actually just walking into the blind person's DMV, and when I walked in there, who should I bump into? my amazing, beautiful girlfriend. And we just walked, we just, I, we literally walked into each other. It, it was kind of ridiculous. And then I said, I was sorry. I asked if she had, if she had Facebook, if she had Facebook, we could connect on Facebook and be friends. And, and then, and she goes, I don't have Facebook, but she does. Um, and then she, I, th I think that was a coy way of get, telling me, trying to get me to give her her number get her number um there was also um a time when we were sitting on her couch in her home and then she just looks over at me and puts her arm around like i had my arm around her and she goes she goes so what kind of car do you drive i'm, I'm like hello i'm blind like you <laughs> and uh yeah that was a great time I I also been thinking about starting another business, which I want. I'm thinking about becoming a blind magician, and it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. I would like to show you my first inaugural trick, if that's okay with everyone. I'm gonna yes. take this uh, plain old Garth Brooks hat, and I'm gonna put my hand sanitizer in it, and I'm gonna make that <laughs> bottle of hand sanitizer disappear. <laughs> Holy shit. That's awesome. But, um, yeah, I've, I've really uh, been enjoying this. This has been a lot of fun, guys. Um, I would like to tell you one more thing, leave you off on one, one more point. I've been noticing as a visually impaired person, um, a lot of people like to, um, uh, you know, guess or think that, hey, 
oh, you're visually impaired, so you can see, you can't see. And then they'll start asking me about, like, their fingers and they start sticking their fingers up at me, going, hey, how many fingers do I have up? One, two, five, seven, whatever they're putting up. And then I, I just get so frustrated and pissed off when people do that. And then I just have to say to them, hey, how many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> um, yeah, th th that's definitely a good one. One other thing I hate about <laughs> that people do is that they'll just point when I'm asking someone for a little bit of directions, they'll point and go, hey, it's over there, over there, over there. Hey, what's going on? I can't see over there. <laughs> um, enough uh, blind jokes, but, I, but I've been walking around a lot in the woods near my house. And I've been um, getting lost a lot. And a lot of times I'd have to call my brother and, and he would have to help me out and try and find, find, basically find where I'm at. Um, he knows the woods just a little bit better than me. And last week he, he actually saw me. I was walking across an old abandoned bridge that, that's in the woods, woods near me. And it was just a, a trying time, I might say. Um, I've been learning uh, some new accents and I've been doing my North Carolina accent. How y'all doing tonight? That kind of accent. Um, but I've been also doing a Texas <laughs> accent where you're going, y'all want to go down to the river? No, it sounds exactly the same. I got to switch that up for you. Um, but I have been uh, learning that the Texas accent because I recently became a, a brand ambassador for a CBD company uh, down there called Shellshock CBD. It's veteran owned and operated. Um, I mean, sorry to give you a shameless plug. But... I mean, a shameless plug like this, but, uh, um, I have a ten percent code if you guys want it. It's Matuza M A T U Z A, ten percent off. Um, oh, I sure. And uh, what else? Um, blind, I'm the Blind Beard on YouTube. If you guys want to become a subscriber to my channel over there, and um, I do a, I do a Laugh You Lose challenge um, on Friday nights with um, with my good friend Whistler, who is on a channel called Theory of a Blind Man. Um, if you guys want to check that one out too, um, but thank you for uh, having me tonight and thank you for enjoying and making us feel a little normal for us all. Have a great night, guys. so much um all right i'm so glad that you were at the dmv uh yeah. that's first and uh the half fair office actually and uh if <laughs> and that you go walking in in the woods uh you gotta be careful walter we don't want to lose you in the woods so you have to uh, we don't want to lose you out there they actually yeah. uh they actually found a uh i have woods near my house and they actually found a headless body in the woods near my apartment <laughs> Yeah, and uh, the police that the police sent out a bulletin that um, that they were not ruling out foul play. Oh, great! Which, uh, <laughs> well, I, I which is good because they shouldn't rule out foul play because <laughs> you know we all know that that's you know middle of the night. Ladies were walking through the woods three in the morning. Your head falls off. It happens all the time. <laughs> coming, coming, you're coming back from Club COVID. Yeah. Totally Club COVID. Uh, COVID in the middle of the night with like one shoe over your shoulder, another one like half on your foot. And a random glove hanging out of your vagina. All right, you guys ready? Are you ready? <laughs> that was for all of you out there. Making sure you're awake. Are you drinking? Are you ready for more? Yes, let's keep going. I want to scratch my neck, but I'm not going to scratch my neck right now. All right, you guys ready for more? Because I'm about to bring up one of my besties right now to the stage. Yes, I am. I don't see her. Where is she? Is she She's around? Up. All right, I don't see her, and I want to see her. 
coming to the stage right now. So funny. I've known her for so many years. She performs all over. She travels everywhere with comedy. She's got uh, a podcast called Karis Comedy Corner on iTunes. She's the Greek goddess of comedy. And like I said, she's one of my besties. Put your hands together and welcome the very funny Ellen Karis, everybody. Woo! Ellen Karis. Woo! Hey. You are one of my besties. Um, this is great. I, I get to talk to somebody else other than my husband. And um, that's refreshing <laughs> for him. Uh, so we're doing all this Zoom stuff. I think we're going we're gonna to have some issues when we're done. Because when we all go back to the wild, we're all going to talk on delay. You realize that? Because we have <laughs> in the normal um, Jim, when Jim wants to put this all together, Jim, I love you. Uh, always has good people. He went on, he said that he advised us to stand up because it would give us more energy. And uh, I just want to let you guys know that um, I'm in bed. <laughs> like Linda, I don't get out of bed for less than $10,000. Yeah. <laughs> because times are tough, I've lowered my price. So now it's $10. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You know, we all have to make adjustments. Um, uh, let me tell you, no matter what happens, okay, even worse than this coronavirus, there are going to be two people on this planet that will always have jobs. Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> okay. Have you seen what Marie Osmond sells? She sells Nutrisystems. And by the way, because Lori's Italian, I want Lori. We're gonna. I want to craft a letter to Marie. It's not manicotti. It would <laughs> bothers the shit out of me. Okay, we got to teach her that. Um. Uh. What else? Did you, oh, the dolls. She's got the dolls that look. You remember Chucky the movie? They all look yes. like this doll. And uh, she sells heroin. That was the other. <laughs> <laughs> And they don't drink caffeine, which I don't know what one thing has to do with the other, but heroin is funny. So, um, <laughs> that can be these. Um, I, I, I am just aging rapidly. By the way, all, uh, and every time you see me now, no neck. Neck will never be exposed again. I'll tell you everything else. Because <laughs> it's bad. Everything is bad. Um, so, so what do I do all day? So what have I been doing <laughs> for fucking six weeks? Uh, and gigs as I, you know, erase gigs out of my book, slowly but surely, slowly I turn. Um, so uh, I, uh, I, I, I post funny, I try to post funny things on uh, Facebook. That's my main stage now. Uh, if funny images on Instagram. Um, oh, I, I respond to celebrity tweets in the hopes that one of them are going to respond. Gonna say, oh my God, we have to get her for our sitcom. Cause she's just like, she's <laughs> um, and, uh, so I read daily mail and uh, New York post constantly online. I can't, and by the way, a lot of grammatical errors, but the bar is very mm -hmm. low. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and what else do I do? Oh, and I Google useless information. Like who is Frank Sutton? Sergeant Carter of Gomer Pyle. You, you okay? Just you know, so you know, very. He was on Love American Style. I can tell you shit that you will never use ever. Not even, <laughs> not even a question on Jeopardy will it ever be. <laughs> um. Well, oh, I I have completely perfected the art of procrastination. That I've decided when we're, when we go back out there that I'm going to do a TED talk on how not not to get shit done. I I am like I've got this so fucking down pat. It's, it's incredible, um, and this whole quarantine thing is great if you have anxiety. That's a great because I I have anxiety. Oh I've really? Been, my anxiety though is not is mild to moderate. Okay, it's, which I like uh, and I use those words because uh, it, that's the words that are always on in our house because the TV is always on and all the commercials are about mild to moderate. Because <laughs> uh, my husband says he likes to have it's really him. I would never turn it on, but uh, he likes to have the background noise, which really means he can't stand the sound of my voice anymore. So that's basically <laughs> on all the time. So 
It's, yeah. All right. So listen, uh, I know that uh, uh, Lori, I know, is single, but she's, you know, she's with her parents. And um, yeah, so I just, it, and I know it doesn't bother Lori, but, you know, for I know I have other friends that are single and they're like, you're lucky, you have a husband. I am lucky I have a husband. He's a great guy, but he can't stand me at this point. I mean, come on. Uh, it, as a matter of fact, when this whole thing started, he wasn't afraid of the virus, even the whole, even with the respirator thing. He was afraid of being locked in with me for 14 days. <laughs> 47,000 days in his mind. Um, as a matter of fact, so tonight's Sunday night we're doing this. Friday night, I said to him, listen, it's Friday night. I want, I, come on, let's pretend like it's a weekend. We're going to make plans. So you, I said, you have two choices. Either we make whoopee. Or we give each other our first tattoos. So <laughs> the weekend has completed, and I uh, I have a uh, a map of Cyprus on my left ass cheek. Uh, <laughs> great grandparents on my mother's side. Um, oh yeah, it's just it's it's working out so well. We let's see, what do we do? We look through each other's autograph books, eighth grade autograph books. We read those. Uh, we even talked about all the people we slept with. He called me a whore. Um, so that was good. I, I mean, I don't know. I realized that I, I never really told him about my past life. So, um, Mark, oh, so, so this thing got extended, right? Cause we it was supposed to be, well, first it was the Easter thing, which we all know was ridiculous. I mean, listen, I even gave, I gave Trump the benefit of the doubt and I said Greek Easter. Like I gave him an extra week, but you know, we know, <laughs> you know that that was lies. Uh, now we're out to like May 15th, I think is like the new date. And I was excited because it gave me um, a longer time to be able to not get shit done. So I think that that, this is, mm -hmm. this is working out completely perfect. Um, I am glad that I don't have kids. Uh, because I, I mean, if I had a homeschool and what, I mean, I don't have the time for that or the patience. <laughs> I don't really give a shit, quite frankly, I never learn. Uh, my sisters are, st uh, they have, all have kids. They were all struggling. And I'm like, listen, you know, some of them were stupid anyway. I mean, it really wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never see this. They'll never see this. Trust me. They won't go to a live show. They're certainly not going to fucking click on. Something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, you know, make them uh, work too much. Uh, we, oh, we did have, because we had Greek Easter, so we had we did a Zoom, okay, which was, we, you know what, even with Zoom, my family managed to fight with each other. Even with Zoom, <laughs> even with any, the, the angriest people you will ever meet in your entire life. I've never seen anything like that before. Um, so, I, I, is anybody uh, dreaming, because a, a lot like are you are you have like right it's like i've been reading about this yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. i had a dream um because i live on the upper east side and i had this i woke up i was shaking i was sweating that i moved to the upper west side like i was like <laughs> <laughs> it was foreign land to me i didn't know what was i had to speak a different language it was a different dialect and um <laughs> all different uh, but uh, let me tell you, we uh, there's something that goes on in my neighborhood. And the other night, there was a dog, and it was yapping. Like, it woke me us up from like 4.30 in the morning till 7 o'clock in the morning. And I know that, you know, we're supposed to always stay positive and put out the vibes and the whole, I get, and I'm, I'm all about, you know, uh, good energy. But I am hoping that that dog will take a shit on that owner's bed every night this week. That's <laughs> I, <laughs> out there as I sage and uh, use it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, a couple more things. Okay, so e uh, so Easter and, and Jim knows this. Well, uh, so us Greeks, you know, we're very very strict about Easter and Lent. You know, I know Catholics do the whole like no meat on Friday. I mean, no offense, but that's push pussy shit to me. Uh, but we go the whole way. We do exactly what Jesus did in the desert, in the dark, um, and uh, and I. So I I was vegan for uh, it's like fifty days because the Lent it's not forty it's like fifty eight or I don't I think the Greek government is doing the Lenten math. But anyway, whatever. Uh, not to get political, but uh, I have to tell you. So I didn't eat meat for fifty seven days. I'm not gonna lie. 
a bat started to look really good to me. I could have <laughs> the side of onion rings, I, I would have fucking, I don't care. I would have been satiated because vegetables, not so much. Garbanzo beans, you can shove it up, up your ass. Um, and, uh, what else? Oh, what other thing? Uh, uh, I learned, okay, so this was my big takeaway as we're in week, going into week seven of the coronavirus. My big, huge, my moment, my, my, my self-reflection is that uh, cauliflower rice sucks. It, <laughs> it tastes like the socks of a teenage boy. That's what <laughs> That's good for me. Thank you for indulging me. Yay! Wow. Ellen Callis! Oh, I love you. I love you so much, and I actually like, uh, apparently, um, teenage boy socks, because I enjoy. <laughs> apparently, I have a weird fetish. Who knew? All right, we got a couple of more. You guys ready for more? You ready for it? We got a couple of more. You hanging in there? Yes, you are. We're going to come back with some more music. You already know her. Welcome back to the stage, Lara Star. Hi. All right, guys. So th this next song, I'm going to bring my lovely assistant in, okay? <laughs> this is him. <laughs> yep. So this guy right here. Uh, this song is going to help us a little bit with our, our biggest problem during COVID-19, during this quarantine, which is obviously carbs, okay? So for all of us that haven't had a chance to get to the gym, I'm going to help you fix it, all right? <clears throat> so all the ladies out there, I want you to stand up, all right? And the guys, I want you to stay seated, stay comfortable. If you don't have a chair, just squat, all right? Pretend, like women do in the bedroom. My mom's watching this, okay. Uh, so, great. Um, this guy's gonna be my, uh, he's gonna help lead you, okay? So women are standing up, guys are sitting down. And every time I say a word beginning with the letter B, if you're standing, you're gonna sit. And if you're sitting, you're gonna stand. All right, let's just try that. Somebody give me a word beginning with the letter B. Ball. Ball, I heard ball, all right. Another word, stay down. Oh, you're doing good. Another word with a B. Bitch. All right, <laughs> whoever said that, nailed it. All right, cool, so we see what kind of crowd this is. Good, all right, and here we go. Remember, if there's a B, if you're standing, you sit. If you're sitting, you stand. And my bunny lies over the ocean. My bunny lies over the sea. My bunny lies over the ocean. So bring back my bunny to me. You guys are doing horrible. All right, and here we go, <laughs> faster. Bring back, bring back, bring back. To me, bring back, bring back, bring back my body to me. <laughs> yeah, guys, that was actually pretty good. Not horrible. Um, and to be honest, my main goal was to get him to work out because my God, have we been eating a lot? All right, nice <laughs> <for> John. <laughs> All right, cool. Good work, guys. Worked off some of those calories from quarantine. All right. Everyone clap again for Lara. That was such a fun game. And I, I, I'm sorry I didn't stand up, but I, I did I did this. This is I did it like the I, old yeah, hip-hop. I said fake it. I, right. I was I, I felt like I was doing old hip hop. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've made it all the way to the end of this hurrah with our final comedian who was very funny. He's the reason why we're all here. He's yeah. like God to us. Please put your hands together and welcome Jim Mentrino. Oh. Hey! Lori, you need a new God. You definitely <laughs> need a new and improved God. Um, okay, so there's uh, just a couple of things I want to talk about this week because this has been an interesting week. Because not only am I doing all the things I'm doing to try and get everything in place, I also have to move on Friday. What? Yeah. Before yeah, before the uh, before the COVID thing hit, we had signed a lease to get a bigger place in the same complex, literally across the courtyard. 
Um, but when COVID hit, where they're like, oh, well, they'll just delay the moving until after it. And then, nope, you guys got to be in the new place on May 1st. And uh. so we're in the middle of moving. So this week I called 71 movers. Oh my God. Um, and uh, I am over 71. Apparently, I can get a hooker easier than I can get a mover. <laughs> so I'm thinking of hiring five or six hookers and having to move boxes. I don't think that's wrong. Um, it's also been an interesting week because it's been a glorious food week. And we're going we're gonna to talk about this. Um, earlier in the week, it, on Wednesday, I had a, uh, a couple of friends send me a care package from Katz's Deli which has mm -hmm. caused a little bit of a war in my house because apparently there's, there's meat and I have knives. So the rest <laughs> of my family is trying to get to the meat. And I'm there like, look, there, it's already pre-carved, but I'm not above carving a motherfucker. All right? <laughs> there's, there's a pound of pastrami in there, and if it slices missing, somebody's going to die. And it's probably not going to be me. <laughs> Um, and, and, and it's been great because, first of all, you don't realize how much they send you until they send it. And you're, they're like, it is 530 in the morning. I can't sleep. Let me get a pickle. If you've ever said that <laughs> phrase in your life, you are either pregnant or in quarantine. One of those two things <laughs> has happened. Um, here's a bigger one, though. I don't know how it's been for you guys, but since since they closed everything down, since they put the force quarantine, uh, I live in New Jersey, and all of the Chinese restaurants in my town just closed up. There's no Chinese food at all. And if, if you know anything about Native New Yorkers, Chinese food is like one of the four food groups. It, it's pizza, <laughs> it's Chinese food, it's deli, and it's whatever the fuck the bar is serving at happy hour. Those are your four basic <laughs> food groups. So the Chinese was gone for like a month. And then I'm at, I'm at the supermarket, I'm shopping, and I'm getting stuff. And, and by the way, if you're at a supermarket and somebody gets within six feet of you, you are legally allowed to shove the cart into their ankles. You do know that, right? <laughs> you're allowed to cripple people at the supermarket if they break social distancing. So I'm in the supermarket and I hear one guy quietly and covertly tell another guy that one of the Chinese food places is open. And he said it like a secret. And I'm there like, well, what do you mean it's open? And then he said, no, 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 we're just speculating that it might be, a, but we don't really know if it's open. So I had to figure it out. And there are like eight Chinese restaurants in town. And so like I'm calling each of them and it's all rolled over voicemail. And I finally call one and they pick up, but it's like really covert because they pick up and they don't say the name of the restaurant. They go, hello. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah, is, is this Six Happiness? And then they're like, who's this? So I'm, I, now I know. Now I know what's happening. Now I know what this is. If they're like, look, man, I just want a Chinese food delivery. And it immediately took me back to when I was a teenager, and they'd have to call the guy for the weed, and he wouldn't trust you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got to make him trust you. I now need to make this Chinese food restaurant trust me. And the guys, they're like, I, I, I don't know. I, your number's not in my, in familiar. It's not coming up. And I'm there like, look, I haven't ordered from you before, but I really want dumplings. Um, and I'm willing to pay a premium price. Well, I'm not above overpaying for some dumplings. So the guys, they're like, I don't know. Like, Can you send me a picture? <laughs> but now I realize I'm actually sexting the Chinese food. <laughs> so I take a picture and I send it to him. And he comes back out and he goes, you kind of look like the kind of guy who would call it the, the Chinese flu. <laughs> I wrote back and up there like, I know what I look like. Give me the fucking dumplings. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so now, now I'm in a negotiation to get dumplings. So we, we go back and forth. I finally get him to trust me. Uh, don't ask me how I got him to trust me. I, I, I think I sounded desperate. I think, I think my go-to was, <laughs> hey, you have a picture. You see what I weigh. I got to be more hungry than I am racist. <laughs> Clearly, I have to be one is greater than the other. So trust on that. Um, and I'm pretty sure the food was packed in spit, but I don't care. It's Chinese. I haven't had Chinese since, since literally February. So I'm there like, I need Chinese. 
Um, and, and so we order it. And I said, how long is it going to be? And he's going to be, he goes, it's going to be about two hours. And don't call back. It yeah. hangs up. Don't call. So I'm not even positive that Chinese food is coming. I do know <laughs> I paid my credit card, so I'm a little bit okay. So about, about an hour and 45 minutes pass, and I hear a rapid knock on the door. Like, remember when you were a kid and you were fucking with somebody in the neighborhood and you knocked on the door to run away? It was that kind of knock. And I walked out, and as I'm opening the door, there's a Chinese guy dashing to the car, and there's a bag of Chinese food. And apparently, I was so excited that the Chinese restaurant was open, I ordered enough Chinese food to feed the entire complex. Like, if I bring over the five hookers to help me move, I can feed them with Chinese food. So I, I, I've now got all this Chinese food, and, and, and we're laying it out, and I'm feeling incredibly guilty. You know, and I'm not feeling guilty that, that I ordered the Chinese food. I'm not feeling guilty that I, I did shady things to get the Chinese food. I'm feeling guilty for the homies that don't have Chinese food. That's what I'm feeling guilty for. <laughs> well, I'm feeling like I needed to spill a little bit of the 40 for the homies that don't got no dumplings. That's, that's what I was feeling in my heart at that moment. Um, that, that was my, the big, like, exciting COVID thing. And, and then there's like the little COVID things. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like little things that are just more annoying than they are anything else. For instance, I don't know how to, most of you guys are still living in the city, but I moved to the suburbs a few years ago and there are animals in the suburbs <laughs> and it is getting much more deserted in the suburbs and they're taking over. Here's how bad it is. Apparently, I have a family of crows that have moved in directly outside my bedroom window. Okay. Directly outside my bedroom window. So I'm in a deep, deep sleep, and all of a sudden I hear a crow, and I'm there like, fuck, I'm in an Edgar Allan Poe mode. <laughs> what the fuck is that? You just burst into consciousness with a crow, like, Wah! and I'm there like, look, I don't want any problems with you guys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Because I've seen the crows in cartoons. You're a little badass. I get that. So I'm trying to get the crows into a different tree. You know what I'm saying? I just want them <laughs> in a different tree. So I'm looking and I'm like, they don't have a nest. They just kind of like this tree. So what I've done is I've taken, to, taken any stale bread we have in the house, grabbing it and going to a different tree across the street and leaving it there, hoping that they'll say, hey, there's food at that tree, let's leave this tree. But that's not what's happening, because <laughs> apparently the squirrels in my neighborhood have unionized. Once, <laughs> once the bread was laid down, there was some kind of secret squirrel call, and I saw, I don't know what you would call, is it a flock of squirrels? Is it a gaggle of squirrels? It's a <laughs> bunch of fucking squirrels is what it is. And they just surrounded this tree. And there were, anytime birds were coming, I actually got to, to see, you know, nature calling videos because I saw a war between crows and squirrels. And let me just tell you, <laughs> if you ever see animal wildlife in a fight, put money down on the squirrels. I don't know. Squirrels <laughs> have a reputation for being cute. They're not. They're rats with a good press agent. That's what they are. They are <laughs> badass. They are violent. And, and they were there. And, and I... I'm, I'm just marveled at this because the squirrels were kicking ass and then over in the corner of my eye I just see a couple of bunnies cute little furry bunnies and they're hopping towards the squirrels and I see the squirrels stop and look at the bunnies and it was that same kind of look you would have as a fourth grader when you were all badass in fourth grade and then you heard the eighth grade badass coming towards you you were there like, oh, <laughs> oh, I'm fucked up now, didn't I? So, you know, now I start to see these squirrels who were a fierce group in a few seconds ago, slowly backing away from the bread. And they're leaving the bread. And I, if, if there was a wild animal leaving food, you know some evil shit is about to happen. Except for one squirrel who was there like, oh, I'm eating this. And he, he kept trying to eat. And I, I actually saw a rabbit beat the shit out of a squirrel, which 
I got to tell you, is much more interesting than Tiger King. It was a much better show. It had a better plot. And I like the protagonist a whole lot more. Um, final thing, and, and then I'll be out of here, and I'll let you guys get, uh, get back to your lives. But it, everyone's looking forward to something, you know, post-quarantine. Post like, what do you want most? Like, I'm talking, I'm talking to a, a friend of mine, and I'm there like, what are you looking forward to most? And he goes, man, I just want to know in my heart of hearts that the last time I hugged somebody wasn't going to be the last time I ever hugged somebody. And I went, that's absolutely beautiful. And he goes, what are you looking forward to? And I said, I'm looking forward to Chinatown without me having to hurt somebody. That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> so we've all got priorities. You guys have been a lot of fun. Thanks, guys. Yay! Bye, everybody. Gentlemen, that is our show. Wasn't it wonderful? Yes, it was. Let's do a re recap. A recap. Your first comic was Dan Rosenblatt. Don't forget Davin's Dan, iHeartRadio, Ali Fowler, Comedy Confessions, Amazon Prime, and Jordan Rocks, Productively Stoned. We have Lara Starr. You can see her in her series profiles, please, on Amazon Prime. And we also had Walter Matuza, YouTube channel, The Blind Beard, Ellen. Harris, Harris Comedy Corner on iTunes, and Jim Mandrino. She has an album called uh, Not Dead Yet, and you can purchase it on iTunes. Definitely do that. That is our show. Ladies and gentlemen, you can, uh, with the pandemic, and there's a lot of artists that are out of work, so if you are receiving an unemployment check, you got a little bit of a stimulus check, and you want to share the wealth, Please feel, take care of your artists. Um, you can donate to us here. You can tip out the comics. Uh, if you go to the chat, you can see their Venmo. Um, I, I would, if you wanted to uh, tip me out, I ask that you please instead um, split it up between all of the other comedians. Uh, I would rather the money go towards them. And, uh, and that's our show. We are gonna be here every single week. Sunday funnies. You can always get us on Eventbrite. And then Jim, you said that this is going to. Uh, uh, we're we're going to re this, this tomorrow night on uh, Facebook Live, and then on Friday night we're going to air it on YouTube, and uh, everyone will get notices about that. Uh, guys, also Erin, who puts all of this together, the Eventbrite, Aaron! she takes care of the chat room. She is our MVP superhero. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Just keep coming back. Tell your friends. Have fun. All right. Bye -bye, Be safe, everybody. everybody. Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. Everybody, this is Hello. Uh, I'm Amanda, and that's Jim. Yeah. And <laughs> or actually, that's Jim, depending or on which Eminem. way it goes. Eminem. We're, we're going to release a rap. Oh, I want um, M&M's now. You want M&M's? Uh, <laughs> you know what else I want, though? <laughs> you viewers, I want you to go check out our Amazon special. Yeah, it's Finally, an M&M special. Streaming on Amazon Prime. So if you would like to see videos that are not contained in two little boxes, uh, then you just go over to Amazon Prime. They and, were made and, BC before Corona. <laughs> BC, yeah. Yeah, and uh, there, there's actually social contact in there. We are not social distancing in those videos. So much social contact. Way too much and social contact. And some unsocial contact. contact. <laughs> there's a little bit of anti-social contact in there. But go, <laughs> go and enjoy it. And uh, we'll keep bringing you new videos all the time over here too. All right, bye everybody. Stay bye. safe. <laughs> anti-social contact. <laughs> When I got out of jail, I decided I would try drugs.
Dick pics. Like a fat guy needs that kind of stress. Have you ever played Santa Claus? <laughs> no. Pays $150 to $200 an hour. Ho, ho, ho. I am in. And then I kicked my wife. <laughs> While I was joining the gym, I pick out the one with the best snack and smoothie bar. <laughs> so what's my logical answer? I go get a vasectomy. <laughs> my first thought was, damn, I'm paying you a lot of money and I gotta shave myself. <laughs> Hey, I want to thank you guys so much. Very much. I'm John G. Thank you. So what are you gonna do? You're not gonna start out. I don't know what I'm gonna do. You need to make some plans, explore your different options. But besides, with you guys being broken up, it's a really good opportunity for you to get way laid. You always wanted to move to LA, now's your chance. I still love my wife. Okay, can you stop being a whiny little bitch? Is this some sort of experimental therapy? Does this mean you're not going to drive me back and forth to shoots? Probably. I'm going to need a raise. So, this has been a wonderful sociological experiment. Did you guys have any worries about signing up to do this? No. No. Yeah, we're, we're an open book. We are, and we're always on the same page. Always. We're an open book on the same page. You're still not ready? We have to leave in like five minutes. I'm ready. Uh, you're not dressed. Yeah, I am. Uh, no, you can't go like this. Do you want some tea? No, I'm good. Actually, I think I'm just gonna turn on some wrestling. Like hell you are. Oh yeah, well, that's the last time we watched Sherlock in this house. What made you change your mind? Half naked girls. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, this is so exciting. <sighs> he got me a vibrator. Mom was right, that really was a good gift. There is no one at the beach right now. <laughs> Do you want a skinny dip? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Now. What are you doing? Speaking of her hair, by the way, every morning I just, a clump of just red chia pet is just in the shower. Every morning. I don't know how she still has hair. Are you trying to tell me that someone sent you unsolicited photo of boobs? I mean, I don't know. It's not impossible. You tell me people send you dick pics all the time. Yeah, but it's different. How? It's just different. He just flips the channels. Like, I'm like, we just, like, I don't even understand what's happening. She just likes to think she's right without considering any other information. Juice or milk. Um, he never finishes it off and throws it out. He just leaves a little bit at the bottom. You would look... So hot in this. I'll return it, I'll return the lingerie, 
and the shoes. Okay. Wait, what? What shoes? No, stop. What shoes? You didn't say anything about the shoes. What? They are saying, where do you want to do your special? There's only one place. I want to go home. Comic strip. That's home. Holy shit, it's good to come up when you're already drunk. That's amazing. <laughs> Guys looking up like, does that shit work? <laughs> I think it's time you get back in the shape. <laughs> Doc, I've been coming to you for 18 years. Where the fuck did you dig up the word back? <laughs> Some days I've done nothing but ejaculate and sleep, I'll be honest with you. I don't know why I looked directly at you for that joke. But, uh, I was a wrong. Well, I my eyes that is the first whiskey dick reference of the evening. It is now official, I like this side of the room more than these people. <laughs> Screw these people, how are you? <laughs> Welcome next to people that look like Dennis Rodman, but Trendy is me. you either have a good drunk story or you are someone's drunk story. <laughs> I'm too, too damn old. old. The fact that some of these are time release jokes. <laughs> They're sneaky jokes that will get to you in a minute or two. Can't roll. How come no matter how much sleep you get when waking up in the morning we're still tired? Kind of like, uh, good morning. I'm ready for bed. <laughs> hey, the light bill's late. It's always dark where I am. It's <laughs> been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Come on, sinners, let's go down, down to the river to pray. Well, 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 well. As I went down to the river to pray, well, 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 well. Go away, and who shall wear the starry crown? Lord, show me the way. Well, 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 oh, in my time, and I go down, don't want nobody to mourn. Down. All I want for you to do is take my body home. Well, well, well.
everybody. This is Hello. Uh, I'm Amanda, and that's Jim. Yeah. And <laughs> or actually, that's Jim, depending or on which Eminem. way you are Eminem. We're we're gonna release a. Rap oh, I want album. Eminems now. You want Eminems? But uh, <laughs> you know what else I want though. Uh, you viewers, I want you to go check out our Amazon special. Yeah, it's finally an Eminem special. Streaming on Amazon Prime. So if you would like to see videos that are not contained in two little boxes, uh, then you just go over to Amazon Prime. They and, were made and, BC before Corona. <laughs> BC, yeah, yeah. And uh, there, there's actually social contact in there. We are not social distancing in those videos. So much social contact. Way too much and social contact. And some unsocial contact. contact. <laughs> there's a little bit of anti-social contact in there. But go, <laughs> go and enjoy it. And uh, we'll keep bringing you new videos all the time over here, too. All right? Bye, everybody. Stay Bye. safe. <laughs> Anti-social contact.